Yeah, my talk today is uh, uh, Petra Tcherno Brivets and the uh, 20 tone universe. Uh, Petra Tcherno Brivets is a, a Russian composer who has just published a book about the 20 tone uh, equal temperament. And this book for me is very strange. Uh, because this temperament is rare, rare, very, very rare. Nobody uses it. It is a temperament which is near the 19 uh, tone equal temperament. And also, uh, it's quite a, uh, a quarter tone uh, temperament. So, who is uh, Petr Tcherno Brivets? Is, uh, as I said, a Russian musicologist and composer. He was born in Leningrad in uh, 1969. And he graduated uh, from the Leningrad Conservatory. And the, in 1993, he defended his PhD thesis on the topic which is called Stylistic Anthematism to the question of functional analogies based on the clavier art of George Friedrich and So his research, his research uh, and his interest is uh, about harmony and musical style and musical aesthetic. So in recent years, he has been re researching an alternative scale, the 20 tone equal temperament. He's the author of two scientific articles, many articles, scientific articles, and two monographs. Fundamental of Musical Aesthetic, which is uh, from his thesis, and 20 Tone Equal Temperament, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is just uh, published. So if you want to know more about that, you can go to the, uh, his website, uh, channelbrevets.com. Uh, you, which is in Russian. So here's a picture of, the, of his book. So the title is just the uh, 20 tone uh, equal temperament. So the structure of this book is uh, uh, an introduction, some preliminary information, and then uh, China Brevets uh, speak about intervals. Uh, taxonomy, numerical relations, and uh, etc. And after that, uh, it gives you its characteristic consonants, uh, characteristic sounds, and uh, it gives many examples of uh, melodic harmonic connection in the 20 tone scale. And how to uh, module, modulation, so uh, it gives an equivalent of major scale and minor scale and from uh, to uh, from one key to another it speaks about that and uh, final uh, conclusion so it's a very uh, classical uh, book about that and um, uh, it was for me the the opportunity to to think about the 20 tone uh, equal temperament and uh, to, to do some, uh, I will explain that, uh, to do some uh, reflection about that. So here is the structure of the 20 tone uh, Edo or, or, or tone equal temperament as you like. So each tone you see, each, each uh, elementary tone is 60 cents. So it's 10 cents more than the quarter tone. And it's, since there are 20, 20 notes in the, in the octave, it's quite, uh, it's quite a 19 tones, uh, 19 tone uh, equal temperament. The 19 tone equal temperament is uh, very, very uh, usual but the 20, no. So here, what Shannon Brevet's remark is that if you see the uh, equivalent of uh, minor third, they are all, uh, it's 
temporary uh, theorem. So here, uh, e, e, flat, e flat, and here uh, F sharp, and here A, and then uh, C, all, uh, all minus third are the same as the uh, as in the twelve tone uh, temperament. So, and Chernobyl, let's use uh, uh, a notation of the, the it, do, it does not use a special uh, notation, it just used, as you see, two, two st staff with uh, two, 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 two lines. So the first one is uh, uh, the equivalent of the of the the sound and the second one is uh, what the player uh, it's uh, the note on the clavier. So, uh, channel rivets uh, remark many many things. So about uh, uh, pure thief and uh, so I, I have translated some some experts. So a pure thief in the 20 tone equal temperament is significantly higher than natural, so and also in the traditional 12 tone temperament. Fortunately, the feeling of its stability and consonance does not disappear. A certain background is added. It seems to us that it sounds with a light, almost impossibility, imperceptible falsity, although not annoying. This fifth will always bring tension, perhaps in the dissatisfaction. Of course, the pure fifth problem is largely a tuning problem, and there can be no single solution. It tries quite sharply when using those instruments that give a powerful overtone background. Not only keyboards, in particular, this full, fully applies to the acoustic guitar, at the same time, it, this program, this program actually disappeared through its traditional bowed stringed instruments. In both the violin and the cello, the 20 tone fifth, both melodic and harmonic, is absolutely devoid of damage. On the contrary, it is original and colorful without losing the defining constructive properties of such a significant interval. So, and the last quotation, uh, the piano requires a kind of acoustic processing, unfortunately possible only on a digital synthesizer. Several of our thoughts, prim primarily the second, fifth, the nearest fifth, more precisely the duodecim, should be muffled, suppressed. Otherwise, when playing a harmonic fifth, there will be a close interaction of the real upper voice with the overtone of the lower one. As you know, the proximity of such close to each other microspace sounds gives rise to an extremely unpleasant effect. So the next quotation is on the page 32 and 33. So channel brevets also try to compare uh, the 12 Edo and the 20 Edo, in called division of the octave. So if you make three steps in the 12 Edo, you have a minor third. Here, in the 20 Edo, you have a minor tone. If you go four steps ahead, you have a major third, and in the 20 Edo, major tone. The fourth is replaced by the minor third, the triton is the neutral third, and the fifth is the major third. So you see that there are there is three kind of third, minor, major, and neutral. So the minor third are tempered uh, third I have just said before. And minor six is replaced by a perfect fourth, major six is a major fourth, minor seven is a triton. And major seven is a minor fifth. Minor fifth is something very strange. So because in the twelve video there's uh, just a perfect 
perfect uh, <laughs> so uh, and uh, uh, in the in the, uh, the equa this equation the two last equation are important because the they are justified uh, the use of the 20 edo. In the 12 edo, you have a major third plus a minor third, which is the fifth. So this is the basic construction of the uh, major triad and, uh, and the minor triad or so. And in the 12 edo, the major third plus the minor third is the equivalent of uh, is a fifth also. So now I have tried to uh, think uh, differently than Chernobrevets about uh, the Chernobrevets uh, in the end in his book, uh, uh, an approximation by just intonation intervals. So I have tried to use uh, continued fraction and uh, conversion to have the what is the mathematical best approximation. So the fraction uh, are the, the first fraction of the best approximation. So, uh, and uh, uh, you see that uh, with this fraction, you can uh, play uh, the same uh, the same 20 Edo uh, with uh, if you are uh, if you have an algebraic uh, spirit, so you can do some uh, calculation with this. But uh, what is the problem eh, with the, this uh, best approximation is when you use it, you lose the fifth relation. So uh, if you add a major third and a minor third, you get a, a kind of fifth, but it's not the fifth of the 12 video, 20 video. And uh, but when you add a major third and a neutral third, you get a new relationship with a minor fifth. So this is also important because uh, channel rivets, as I uh, said you be, uh, after, uh, use some uh, uh, equivalent of major and minor uh, chords. So, uh, in the 20, so this is a quotation of Charles Brevets. In the 20 tone temperament system, five pure fifth close with three octaves, as well as five pure fourths with two octaves, five augmented second large tone with one octave. This is a very uh, usual uh, uh, thing uh, when you construct a temperament, uh, you want to see uh, how many how many fifth you can get in uh, one octave or, or several octave. The most interesting part of Chernobyl treatise is certainly is harmonic theory. How it's I repeat a classical uh, harmonic theory. How can we find an equivalent of major and minor scale in the twenty degree system? This is an old question that Vishnegatsky had already posed in the quadratone universe. He had found a scale which call, uh, he called diatonicism chromatism. Uh, this scale has 13 notes. And increasing the number of degrees in the major scale is necessary to maintain the balance between the white and the black key, because the, the white key is a diatonic uh, scale. So, Sorry. So, uh, in several articles, uh, we have generalized Vishnigarsky theory and shown that if we take an equivalent of the fifth at the 11th degree, we can construct from fifth to fifth a diatonic scale that will be the major equivalent from uh, unique triton is the pair 1, 11. So, 0, 10, yeah, 0, 10 is the equivalent of the trite. So, Chano Brevets uh, does not change uh, the number of notes, and in his uh, major and minor scale, there is only seven, tone, seven notes, as in the traditional system. Uh, so, 
on the other hand, uh, the composer distinguishes three different modes, natural, harmonic and melodic. And the melodic is declined, ascending or descending for both major and minor. So here are the, 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 the scale of piano brevets. Uh, zero is C, four. You have to, to take this equivalent. So four is this. Uh, this is uh, D sharp. So equivalent of D sharp. So uh, five is uh, E flat. Uh, seven is E sharp, etc. So I've come translate all these scales. And uh, what you see, it's uh, all the, 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 the first blocks, 0, 4, 7, 8, 12, are the same for all scales. Mm -hmm. So, in my theory, it's completely different. And uh, here is the, for me, the diatomic scale in the 20 Kido, where there is just one eleven, just one Triton floor. Uh, for the, the major scale, and the major scale goes from uh, 11 to 11. 1 plus 11 equals 12, uh, 12 plus 11 equals 3 because it's modulo uh, 20, etc. 3 plus 11 equals 14, so each you go from 11 to 11. 11 is the equivalent of the fifth, the kind of uh, minor fifth. And if you want to convert this major scale to uh, the associated minor scale, you have just to introduce uh, another uh, generalized triton, uh, which is uh, here at the end of the scale, as we do, in fact, in the 12-tone system. So, Piano Privets uh, does not uh, uh, think about uh, keyboard's uh, representation, but if you want to uh, go into the tradition as Mersenne, etc., you can uh, try to design some keyboards. So the first one is a chromatic keyboard. So it could be you have two, two sharp, uh, two black keys uh, side by side. Uh, but if you want to have the uh, C, the uh, Chano Brevets uh, C dur, uh, C, uh, C major, uh, the diatonic scale on the white uh, keys, you need to, to uh, have another design and uh, introduce uh, some, uh, some altered. Uh, uh, here uh, for uh, D flat, F sharp, and uh, B. Uh, okay. So now, uh, well, uh, I, I am very interested by homometric sets because I, I have working with a minimalist uh, composer, Tom Johnson. And uh, in the minimal music, uh, Sometimes, like in the like Terry Riley or some, some composers of this kind, the music seems does not evolve. So it seems to, to stay, uh, but it change. But you have, if you, if you do not uh, listen carefully, you don't see that the music evolves. So you have uh, the, the feeling that the music is always the same. And, one uh, of the characteristic of, uh, of this is the uh, homometric chords or homometric scales because uh, homometric chords of uh, uh, homometric sets in general, it's, they have the same interval contents. So, for example, uh, the first example, which is uh, Lindo Patterson, which is a crystallographic uh, uh, physicist uh, in 1944, he gave this example, uh, 0345 is homometric to 0457. And if you draw uh, on a circle these two chords, equivalent of chords, of course, you see that there is 
two here, one, 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 mm -hmm. one, and three, three, two chords, so three, three, mm -hmm. and the two here, you get here, between five and seven, and four, between zero and four, and you get also here in between zero and four. So these chords are not, uh, are not the transposition or the inversion one up, uh, but they are they have the same interval content. So if you play this chord, you have the same uh, you have, you have uh, uh, the same feeling. So these chords uh, were uh, in the theory they, they they were used by Alan Forte and uh, in his uh, treatise Atonal Music. It called Z relation, and uh, in the in the fifty in the twelve uh, equal temperament in the forty nomenclature, there are, uh, there is a Z uh, on the number of the chord, uh, and this is exactly that. that this is homometric sets. So if you uh, look and try to compute how many homometric sets are there in the 20 EDO, you find uh, this uh, you find this table and this result, so uh, for two chords or two chords of four notes, there are two co chords of four notes which are homometric, 22, uh, 22 chords, uh, 22 pairs of chords of five notes, 96 pairs of six notes, etc. And what is very strange is that you see that there is uh, also three uh, multiplets so homometric multiplets, so this means that for six notes there are two triple that are homometric. So here I give an example of uh, of a pair of uh, of chords homometric. So the first one is uh, C C S S guess and C C S E fifth. These two sets and all their transposition and all their inversion have the same interval content. So the sounds are uh, uh, the same. So here if you look in detail you can write that there is only one, uh, just one between 0 and 1 and here between 0 and 1. So after that there is one uh, four step between 1 and 5 and you find it here between 6 and 10, etc. So, and if you look at the first here, 6 notes, 6 notes, there are 2 triplets, the first is on the first line and the second is on the first line, so these 2 triplets, and all their transposition and all their inversion sound the same. So this is a very rich uh, material uh, for composer who want to stay but without using transposition or inversion but without another uh, another chord which is not exactly the same but sound the same because they have the same internal contents. So now what I have done with uh, with uh, also with Tom Johnson is working with combinatorial design. Uh, combinatorial design is, uh, is uh, an arrangement of a uh, number of blocks. So, for example, uh, this is a Fano, uh, Fano plane of seven blocks. So, the seven blocks are uh, here in the bottom. So, you have seven blocks. And each block, in fact, in each block, uh, there is so uh, two numbers appears together exactly 
in uh, one block. So 0, 1 appear only here, 0, 2 appear only here, 0, 3 appear only in the first block, etc. So you can have so because it's uh, designed 7, 3, 1. But if you have instead of 1 another value such m, so you have you can have uh, you can have uh, a, a, two, two numbers can appear in m blocks. So for uh, combinatorial design could be very difficult to draw and it was uh, a very uh, uh, very hard job that uh, composite John Jensen do and he had uh, a block design which is 2009 which means that it's, it is made with the 20 nodes of the 20 Edo and there are the blocks are of length 10 and if you take a pair it appears in 9 blocks so the blocks are as follows so take the there is uh, two times uh, two times 90 blocks so this is uh, uh, 38 blocks in this design and uh, uh, the blocks is, for example, you take the uh, the first block is you take the zero and uh, uh, all the numbers on this line except 19. This is the first blocks. The second blocks is composed of one, four, five. All the number is except zero, <coughs> but you take 19. So the third blocks is one, and you take all of the all the uh, numbers after one except 19. So this, the fourth block is all these numbers except one plus 19, etc. So this this uh, drawing represent the 38 blocks. And if you want to show that, for example, the pair 0, 1, the pair 0, 1 must appear must appear nine in nine different blocks. So uh, you have to here is zero one. Uh, ta, 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 ta. And you have to find them. So here is another one, etc. So okay, so you can do the job. So and here uh, this for this design it's. It's not always the, the, uh, the case for all design, but this design you pass from one block to the other by adding one. So now uh, I try to yes. Uh, So it's a channel brief, it's a composition.
example of this uh, music, you can go to uh, YouTube uh, at this uh, uh, address, and uh, you can. There is two two examples: one with uh, cello and one with uh, violin. Thank you very much for your well. attention. Thank you very much. Wow, the uh, Andrei Ivanov, very impressive yeah. without Fred. H how can it be so virtuosistic, actually, uh, t to write in a, in a, in a microtonal system that uh, it's not uh, probably familiar with? Uh, I mean, how long would he need to... I don't know exactly how long he need to, to, to uh, play uh, that, I think. He... It's a, a very, very difficult. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, amazing. Because, uh, you have to, to make a, a synthesis. Uh, uh, you have to 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 recording the, the melody, and after that, you have to try to mm -hmm. and uh, when the, when the, the velocity is important, so it it's very difficult to 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 play just. With, so yes, yes, yes. I'm wondering. I mean, yeah. you get some support, of course, from the keyboard, yeah. but yeah. but but yeah. still, actually, yeah, yeah, I, I would never dare to write this this virtuosity yeah. for a cello player in yeah. Yeah. in a different system. Yeah, yeah. amazing. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. I would like to to ask you if you have uh, any any questions, please. Yes, please. Sorry, yeah, hi. Um, it's fascinating stuff. I mean, wow, what a way of listening. And I'm, I'm so glad you played the music because, you know, you're all the time you try to think, what does this sound like? Um, do we know much about, you know, Chernobyl Brevet's, you know, his vision? What did he, the kind of music he wanted to do? Because he seemed very theoretical, very, very abstract, yeah. you know, these, these different shapes. So, yeah, the music was, I guess, surprisingly expressive. After yes. Everything yes. you've told us before. <coughs> yeah, yeah. It's a quite. Uh, I think Chano Brevets is uh, very in, uh, influenced by uh, Alban Berg and people like that because it's it's a it's a kind of uh, post romanticism yeah. um, and. Um, and uh, if you listen, uh, because he also write uh, music with twelve tones. So, if you listen to his music, you see that it's a, it's, a, it's not a really uh, a contemporary composer. So mm -hmm. it's uh, a kind of uh, I think it's a post romanticism mm -hmm. composer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he also writes for other microtonal systems, or just no, twelve no. tone, or twenty. No, uh, just uh, just for, for twenty tone. Okay. Uh, it's uh, very, very interesting. Uh, I think it's it's for him a, a discovery because uh, I don't know other composer who use uh, yes. uh, that use uh, this system so yeah, the 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 Unix. So and yeah. I think. Uh, it is a uh, proud to be. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. Composition. I was expecting at the end some with computer generated sounds, some examples how you imagine that music could be. Yeah. But we we get really tu very touching music. Yeah, yeah. And uh, has everything. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, please. Just one question about the mathematical analysis of those. Uh, in the triad that you showed, and then after that you showed us uh, the uh, nine pitches. Yeah. So what I understand is this triad has a certain amount of uh, common tones in between those sets, right? Yeah. So what is the uh, musical or logical uh, out? I mean wizard that we can get out from there. So for example, can we have like a common tone modulation from this harmony to this harmony? Or, yeah. so I'm just curious. So for example, uh, composers are, are free to use other notes. 
But for example, uh, Tom Johnson uh, said that since uh, pairs can be connected with another pair, so this block can be a chord, and each block is a chord, and I use the connection between chords to uh, go from one chord to the other, etc. So, but you are uh, free to, to use that you want. So it's just a mathematical structure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Richard had also a question. Yes, thank you. Um, can you remind me of the dates uh, of his work? Uh, you know, the period in which he was uh, working in this, in this system. Uh, the recording... Uh, I can't remember exactly the date of the recording, but uh, it's uh, about uh, 2000 uh, and something. Mm -hmm. And his book? Uh, his book is, uh, has been published uh, last year. No, oh, oh. in, uh, oh. uh, in 2021, yeah. uh, two I, years ago. I keep thinking that if a composer like, for example, Scriabin had had another 20 years, you know, yeah. given his interest in overtone series, that he might have moved in that direction. Yes. And then someone like Samuel Feinberg, who came next in, in that uh, ultra-chromaticism, uh, yeah. again, post-romantic, but uh, there seemed to be a door waiting to be opened there yeah, yeah, in, into course. new uh, of course, of tuning course. systems. Of course, I think that the, the, the Russian uh, in the 19, uh, 19, uh, uh, 15. All the uh, many Russian composers were influenced by Scriabin, and uh, there was uh, in Saint Petersburg or Leningrad there was uh, many composers who worked with uh, microtones. So it was influenced by the Russian futurism, mm -hmm. such as Kubin, which write uh, uh, the free. Uh, the free music. So, in the Blau, the Blau writer, yes. there was a long article about the, the uh, Defrier music, by mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and in this text, he, he proposed to use uh, microtones. And then, uh, Vishnikatsky, and then Georgi Imsky Korsakov, and then many, and then Kennel, and many mm -hmm. composers mm -hmm. were. Uh, in this uh, in this way of doing with microtones. Right, and then came Stalin in 1930, uh, you know, and Copeland in USA. So after that, I think also it was an international uh, uh, way of thinking because uh, there was some uh, some uh, poll around Alois Abar. Uh, in Prague, so also in the U.S. with uh, Charles Lives, and in the U U U.S. also there was uh, uh, another another way with just intonation with a uh, uh, report and you know, people like that. So, but I think uh, many composers want to escape to the uh, uh, twelve tone system. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, okay, and one last question. Yeah, maybe? it was not a question. Thank you very much for this very, uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, just an addendum. So, as uh, uh, you, of course, uh, this, what was his name? Piotr Chernovievitz. Uh, of course, he, uh, without doubt, has has composed the most pieces for, for 20 EDO. But as I know that uh, the uh, Amer in America, in the U.S., the, uh, this uh, Zenamone community, uh, they have composed pieces uh, for almost uh, 
all uh, EDOs between 5 and 41, for instance, and even more. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, checked it out. There, there is the list in the Zenamoni Wiki. You can find everything about every EDO mm -hmm. and all the com compositions as much mm -hmm. as the Wiki is, uh, is uh, completed. <coughs> and there I found uh, the list of this uh, oh. uh, Czarno Briewicz uh, uh, compositions with links and uh, also other. American comp composers like Andrew Hadwright, Aaron Andrew Hunt, he's from Ber no, he's not American, he's uh, in Ber Berlin based, Herman Miller, uh, Savage, Chris Weisfield, and uh, even Stephen Weigel. They have uh, yeah, yeah. composed, uh, yeah. Yeah. of course, this is uh, maybe more partly, it is a contemporary style, partly it, it might be some sort of uh, yeah. uh, experimental pop music. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I know that uh, mm. some composers have, have used this mm. uh, 20 Edo, but it's uh, a passage. Mm. It, they, they, mm -hmm. it does not uh, yeah. focus on this uh, temperament like Chano Brivet. So, yeah, uh, that is true. For example, mm. uh, Ivor Dereg uh, mm. used many uh, yeah. temperament and also uh, and, uh, easily backboot. Yeah. Easy Blackwood, mm. of course, but uh, Easy Blackwood is uh, 19, uh, uh, Ido. His thesis is on the 19, uh, Ido. But uh, also, a very interesting, uh, it's preludes uh, for every, every, uh, every Ido. I think there should even yeah. one of, of 20. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, also, Warren Burt, if you had, uh, mm. the, the, the occasion to, to listen to his, uh, dissonant etude. Is a uh, very interesting uh, mm. and they are written for all uh, Okay, thank you very much We uh, for your great uh, lecture. We should continue. Uh, we still have a couple of minutes uh, delay, Hans, sorry mm. about that. Okay. And so, yeah, Hans uh, Guntalok was born in... So Hans uh, was born in Halle, 1974, and has lived since 20, uh, 2000 in, Esto in Estonia, in, in Tallinn. Yeah. Uh, he's teaching and working both at the Estonian Academy of Music and Theatre, and at the Estonian Academy of the Art, which is uh, one of the supporters uh, of, the, of the symposium. Um, his creative work contains electroacoustic music and acoustic compositions for various chamber music ensembles. In the field of electroacoustic uh, composition, a sp a specialization has been an integral part of his artistic output. Working for a long time with eight uh, speaker systems, he recently prefers higher order amp ambisonic technology. Therefore, he designed his own three-dimensional 17-speaker uh, multi-channel sound system, which is set up in his studio or microtonal, or, or can be moved to, uh, for concerts into appropriate venues. Hans Kuntalok focuses on microtonal pitch organization systems uh, regarding to their specific melodic and harmonic features, composing with the volunteer uh, scale and with 22 equal divisions of the octave. Engaging musicians to play microtonal, he has employed specialized instruments like the volunteer clarinet, a microtonally refretted guitar, building specialized instruments by himself, modified recorders, tubular bells, and also creating specialized um, intonation exercises for flexible pitch instruments and voice. Um, uh, please uh, welcome Hans Gunther Lock. Uh, um, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, Salzburg to this conference, so, and I will talk about practical experiences in composing and performing the peak regulation of the octave. So, it's a way. Useless at the moment. So, and uh, of course, I, I have a lot of information here in my uh, slides, and I will uh, go 
in some way uh, freestyle and uh, and uh, of course I will share the presentation then you can read about uh, the system of course we now show up we come from 20 now from Frank's uh, presentation and we have 22 next uh, Elisa, uh, Elisa will talk about 24 so there's a continue uh, con con yeah. which I have so here uh, some information and about this uh, superpyte uh, system, what the music notation is based here, the circles about that, uh, the uh, circle of fifths and uh, the chromatic circle and the fifths, how they uh, uh, make this uh, beautiful star. So, of course, here this uh, notation with up and down um, accidentals and uh, um, the idea is that to preserve a fifth, what is it? Slightly larger than in um, 12 equals, so it's uh, um, 709 uh, cents, and uh, and uh, that it will uh, look in a musical notation as a fifth, and uh, and that uh, process that we have uh, the highest deviation as um, sharp or as flat, and then we use uh, this system of arrow up, sharp arrow down, and sharp, or if we go down, then we have uh, arrow down. As you see here, here arrow down, uh, flat arrow up, and and flat. So, okay. Uh, now we cannot uh, make a demonstration. Uh, what the idea? Because uh, a keyboard, keyboard like this uh, to build is uh, complicated, and uh, this type of split key keyboard. And thanks to Johanny, uh, who gave me the idea, use uh, two small, uh, smaller keyboard. Uh, uh, keys, uh, then you can reach it with the hand, and uh, so I have at home um, the uh, 61 key version of this, two of them, and if we stack them to, uh, uh, on top of each other, it looks like uh, two manuals, but you can reach it um, with one hand in some way, not, not at all. So, and this has the, is, uh, is a very useful if you want to train uh, musicians, if you want to read uh, uh, this uh, um, special notation, then you can very quickly find that here we have. Uh, and if, uh, in the uh, lower keyboard, uh, we have here the uh, naturals, then we have um, arrow up or, um, or flat, we have here in the, these uh, black keys, then these white keys, they have uh, uh, sharps down or fl uh, flats up. And then we have here the sharps or the arrow downs here. It's, uh, it's quite, quite intuitive, intuitive and so on. So of course here this key I have let the unused because if you come from here it could be an F, uh, but if it will go from uh, downward then it might be an E, so I couldn't decide what to use. So that is, this mm -hmm. key is unused and even the, D, the, the key here is un unused. So. Okay, let's go. Um, Further, so we have here the um, we have here the um, um, names what we use in with our um, musicians and uh, ourselves as composers. So of course there is no standard. So somebody else like other names and so on and abbreviations that you can mark it in a music notation for training. So of course uh, I will be uh, I'm very happy that we have since uh, more than thirty years. Uh, this piano contemporary music days, uh, it is a little um, one week to ten days um, festival, and uh, every year in uh, January it uh, was founded by Andros Kalastu and um, organized by Estonian uh, Estonian Arnold Children's Society. I am uh, also in the, in the board together with Andros and my brother Gerhard. And uh, of course, uh, most uh, we most idea is to bring new knowledge to Estonia and uh, not so much as to make a festival for, for, for collecting music and, uh, and inviting uh, uh, ensembles because for that there are other festivals in Estonia. So, okay, and um, so um, 21 uh, we um, had the first uh, microtonal festival and we uh, decided for 22 EDO. 
and uh, but due to the pandemic that was completely uh, went online and uh, from this online idea we started to have the idea to uh, sing together online so that was the first uh, Vagus Atanasan was in 21 in uh, January and then we found that so uh, so nice idea and in this uh, complicated uh, uh, times we uh, decided to do it two times a, a month uh, for everybody and um, over the internet and then we made three semesters of that so of course name is um, aligned after this um, very uh, famous um, Johann Josef Fuchs uh, uh, counterpoint uh, book of course idea was for me as composer how to find compare or see what is the uh, contrapuntal uh, logic what we can apply and uh, and uh, as um, is this a similar, is this different, what we can do and uh, and of course uh, as we want to uh, produce uh, is as music so then we sing it and learn to sing so and um, so there is also all material is online um, you can reach it over the Schoenberg Society uh, site uh, um, all the materials uh, and the so and uh, so there were a lot of uh, contributors um, uh, like uh, Jacob Barton, Sebastian uh, Dumitrescu, Andrus Kalastu, Gerhard Lok, myself, uh, uh, Joseph Monzo and uh, Johan Nuawala have contributed um, exercises or little pieces. So, of course, in the internet it looks like this when we uh, met. So, and so this is one of the uh, first. Uh, First, you start with an exercise like this, singing it in two voices just for listening together with playing in the synthesizer. Of course, we made it uh, like this uh, open and uh, it didn't very force on to make pressure to sing it without the synthesizer because it takes time to uh, adapt and so. Uh, so, and, uh, so here you go up to the intervals or to the octave. So, uh, here are the results that of course uh, it works uh, it works uh, quite well and uh, for shorter pieces and in slow um, slow uh, tempo because uh, so for longer delays especially sometimes it's US West Coast when uh, Joseph Monzo attended that was sometimes a nightmare if, if you have a delay of one or two seconds and, and well, then uh, East Coast more or less it, uh, it still goes and there's um, fiber optical cables, uh, cables in, in the ground and it's, it's, it's a short way but as you have a satellite hop, a hop uh, inside then it's... Uh, okay then um, of course our la our biggest uh, challenge uh, was then piano content with uh, music three so we had also the idea to uh, not only sing to uh, uh, play with uh, acoustic in instruments and we had um, two calls uh, for scores so um, in 22, uh, so one was for a trio, they, they are uh, professionals and uh, had time to uh, train, so, and uh, the other call for was for call for simple score, so we have uh, uh, more uh, uh, musicians, also us as uh, com com composers and not uh, professional uh, performers, uh, um, and to make it quite a simple um, uh, simple pieces uh, what we can learn in this uh, 10 days uh, of um, of a workshop we had in uh, Bernou. So here we have uh, the whole program of this. We had three concerts, uh, two <coughs> concerts with uh, two different part, uh, different uh, uh, um, uh, pieces uh, in uh, Bernou and the concert in Tartu uh, in, in, in Tallinn, we com combined uh, the both uh, concerts uh, together to one concert. So, uh, Matei is here, he was uh, actively participating, so he remembers that. So, and, uh, okay, here, this is the second, so, of course, I have here um, prepared uh, some uh, little videos, snippets, we can, that we can have some sort of, um, of um, imagination, uh, imagination what
open it with a quick time because it opens it just a random one. So Joe got one, so see some. piece we played Uh, Rados Atanasom, the uh, piece is uh, Yuhani Nuovala's uh, an harmonic piece. Mm -hmm. that in the, in, the, in the rehearsal, so we tried to, to sing also with, completely without uh, support of the synthesizer. It was working, but uh, of course if you're a bit nervous in the concert, so we uh, want to have it secure. So, 
So you see, everything is possible. So it's just a just a question of amount of training. So let's uh, let's uh, be done. Just one of my piece, uh, Credo. <laughs> You 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 refretted the guitars yourself, I remember, right? Uh, In the back. I refretted I refretted this uh, bass guitar with tip ties, uh, yeah. zip ties. So yeah. and uh, um, it's not the best uh, version because you can hurt your hand. Uh, but we, uh, for one uh, Joe Monson piece, I tried to play a bit a bit of bass line. That was, that was all uh, because. Uh, but the other the guitars are refretted by uh, luthier artists and composer improviser Timo Dukkan from Finland. Yes. Yes, yes. So it's really uh, universal, um, uh, universal uh, genius, and uh, he has a little gallery in a healthy key. So, and that is microtonality is uh, is uh, very ongoing in healthy key in Finland. And uh, Johanny mm -hmm. uh, is uh, listening. Me. I apologize. I would to, would to give to uh, Johanny and to uh, Leonora uh, the word, but I think it. We have not time anymore for that. Uh, so, of course, here is uh, the fact that guitars and uh, exercises and porcupine, so chromatically raising up. So, both string instruments, they need also um, uh, audio material for listening and playing along. I made uh, this uh, type of, um, of um, Reaper DAW projects where you can. Um, have a metronome and things like that, uh, it uh, works quite well, so no time for to show it. Of course, here the overview about pitches, and uh, of course, in uh, string instruments, we had that problem that if you want to play the um, 
um, super pipe scale, so at a uh, quarter tool is very narrow, it's not very practical to think that as a basic system. So the basic system for fingering is Porcupine because it has even, even uh, uh, scale steps uh, if you started from, from this uh, mode and then we have a have a C C C C three and uh, that works much better. So and the fingering system is aligned after that. So here I made it for very different uh, for for all all the string instruments and uh, of course all these materials also uh, online. You can uh, look and download. You can uh, you can train yourself if you want. So and of course flute Estonian uh, flute is still not a palu. We have seen also here playing in the in these uh, video snippets uh, and. Um, uh, she made um, uh, fingering for flute, and so I made here some. I think also I cannot uh, read the whole uh, interview. Made uh, interview with her, and um, and uh, then uh, then for uh, for to uh, for to uh, because it's interesting how the process is going on uh, to this for us as composers. We see how we can communicate with uh, in interpreters. Uh, they do this research. Describe your research finding the flu fingerings for 22 Edo. Uh, what difficulties did you encounter? Good news is that it is possible to find and play 22 Edo scale and regular on regular 12 tone flute. It was very interesting in the beginning uh, when uh, you start to look at uh, your instrument with new eyes and through uh, and, uh, new 22 uh, Edo classes. Uh, it's like uh, to be an archaeologist. I couldn't invest to this research enough time, be, uh, but uh, during PNP 2022, and peace for old school, and Masio, I was sitting in my room uh, three or uh, four days, and so on, maybe. Uh, what's the time? Uh, we have seven minutes until the end. Yeah, six so minutes. I, uh, of course, here you can, if I share that, you can read it by, by yourself. There are detailed uh, questions, very interesting. Look. Unfortunately, uh, the table uh, is not uh, formalized uh, ready, but it will in future then we can also publish the table. Everybody can, who is uh, able to play in a flute can, uh, can learn that. And so, okay. And then to Johanny. Johanny uh, was uh, this composer, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, has uh, contributed the most pieces of Cardus and Panassum and also very interesting pieces for uh, for PNP 23, the uh, instrumental uh, part. And so um, I also give, gave him uh, questions. How did you come to 22 Edo and uh, what do you particularly like about it? Uh, in 2016 or so, what violinist Pasi Eri and pianist Emil Holmström asked if I write a piece uh, for them for violin electronic keyboard, spe specifically in some microtonal tune, and they later commissioned it. I had seen the interest in 22 Edo in the microtonal community and heard the music of Brendan Burns and Savage, and I uh, read Paul Ehrlich's paper on 22 uh, equal previously. I uh, composed in just intonation 31 Edo, quarter comma mean tone, etc., and I decided to write a new piece into 22 equal. I had already written two works uh, that made use of the so-called porcupine temperament. The music for a dance uh, theater work for tenor sax and pantala, and a solo piece for Carillo Piano. Uh, both these works were in another tune in 96, uh, but Porcupine is very well supported by 22 Edo, and one of my favorite regular temperaments, uh, with some many exercises pieces in graphs. Uh, before the violin keyboard uh, piece, Sonata for Violin Keyboard, my largest scale chamber music work to date, um, I wrote the music for a TV documentary and asked uh, these uh, same performers to play it. Uh, the sonata was based on this film music. I have also written a suite uh, uh, for Elisa Jervis, a uh, quarter tone keyboard, also in 22 Edo. Not premiered yet, but uh, it, uh, it's being recorded by her. Okay, Elisa is uh, after me. So yes. <laughs> every, everything left here is as in the world is uh, interconnected. So uh, the appeal of 22 Edo, well, of course, uh, maybe I skipped it as, uh, of course, uh, if you're familiar with uh, these uh, concepts of uh, limits and uh, just intonation and comparison, then you understand uh, what he's meaning. It's very clearly written what he, uh, what he likes and this uh, porcupine comma, archi comma, and so what is uh, tempered out. Uh, so we have uh, that uh, um, 22 is not the mean tone system, so we have a larger and a smaller uh, whole tone, what makes it very different from what we have. Okay, here. Elisa is here also. 
Ja, ich warte auf Keyboard, ja, okay. And uh, of course, it's, uh, he wrote here, it's extremely valuable, important to learn to sing the intervals of a non-standard tuning system and great fun. We learn to read the notation and we learn the characteristic intervals. MOS scales are very useful, beautiful music to resources, uh, but they are also excellent pedagogical tools. As a number of pages, intervals and step size is restricted, restricted and they teach us uh, the characteristic intervals and melodic patterns. In our soul pitch uh, lessons, we learn uh, what is difficult to sing in tone or read and uh, what is less so. And we learn something about how the music can be written so as to help and support the singers. As a co composer of music uh, for others to play or sing, this is, uh, is a great preparation for helping and coaching the musicians in the tuning system and its notation. And if I am able to sing uh, from the notation myself, I can expect professional musicians to find the pages too. So, that is from... Uh, and uh, Johann is, uh, of course, he wants to collaborate late, uh, more. And, uh, of course, uh, the double bass player, you see, Lassie Kari, is a very, uh, very good player, and Finnish player, and we all want to collaborate. So Lassie, in future, was planned that he comes with a concert here, but due to yes. the uh, financial uh, 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 denied the financial support, uh, it was not possible. So, but at the end, uh, just one, the last uh, uh, snippet, so Johanni Nuavala, uh, as we also in other pieces, uh, it was of course also Gradus at Panas and go back to Middle Ages uh, to um, organi and, um, and uh, techniques like this. Uh, so Johanni wrote for us uh, an adaptation of uh, this uh, famous Middle Age so, uh, uh, French song L'Homme Armé. So, and mm -hmm. here it is. Uh, Hans, um, uh, is it okay if we ask you now one question and yes. the rest of the questions, you're going to be here until Sunday, okay. so the rest of the questions, uh, if we can find the time during the breaks, uh, if it's fine for you, of course. Yeah, okay. Okay, anyone would like to, to, to ask uh, Hans a question now? Okay, uh, Jacob. I hate to take the one, but I, so did, did you create the super pipe notation, or was that pre existing? It was a uh, uh, former existing. I don't know who invented it. Uh, this annotation. It is in the Zen Harmonic Wiki uh, described, and uh, also, of course, you can notate it in, in such a style, and of course, the same an arrow and uh, and this combination. So. Uh, you know, it was very tricky for me to use when I was writing, but now that you explained it, it makes much more yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. It is, uh, because, it, uh, of course, I, I was also wondering, I would, uh, would uh, like to use Porcupine as a scale, because much more e even. But uh, Porcupine has, uh, has, uh, has uh, not all the fifths. So in Porcupine you have uh, only a few fifths, and uh, four, of course you have more, but... Uh, and then you have the uh, diminished, uh, too much of this diminished fifth, uh, this quarter tone diminished. Uh, and uh, and uh, as we are all uh, trained in a classical way, so uh, so to uh, learn completely new uh, notation system. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, 
it's it's hard to find even uh, ent enthusiastic uh, uh, musicians to to do that. Yeah, it's, it's challenging to work with, but I I see the logic. Of it. Yeah. Of course, uh, some uh, some of these uh, drawbacks or what, what you have is uh, this 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 notation is that uh, all normal intervals like normal minor surf, normal major surf, they have arrows uh, in it, and the um, extra uh, uh, seven limit or what our other other unfamiliar intervals like uh, quarter tone looks like a, like a, like a semitone and. Um, and then the um, the uh, larger septima ma major surf looks like a normal major surf, and the minor surf is a so everything is uh, is pushed up or down, and mm -hmm. uh, and looks normal. That is uh, that is of course first uh, uh, it's it's a bit horrible, but but uh, there is no better way. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and then, uh, that research we have done on ourselves to do, for to decide what uh, what is the the way what. Uh, but uh, how we can go, go further, I Okay. Thank you very much, Hans. Okay, so we continue with the third lecture of the first block today with a very well-known face. Elisa Gerbi uh, is a Finnish pianist who completed her artistic doctor doctoral studies at the Sibelius Academy, Doc Moos, unit in Helsinki. Her written thesis explores the rhythmic and metrical aspects of piano etude film by uh, Georgi Ligeti. Her artistic doctoral project focused on the oldest and newest uh, music written for the piano. Mrs. Yerby also studied in London and Cologne, where she completed her concert exam and obtained a master's degree in musicology from the University of Helsinki. Currently, Mrs. Yerby is working as a piano teacher, in example, at the Sibelius Academy, along with uh, Finnish composers uh, Sampo Hapemeki. Uh, she has developed a new kind of Quarter-tone piano. Uh, as an active performer of contemporary music, she combines um, contemporary music with uh, performances of earlier works, including those written for the forte piano. She has performed extensively throughout Europe and uh, as a chamber musician. And her engagement have taken her to Japan and the United States. Mrs. Yervis' debut, debut album. Our Forte Gun Zum Tanz uh, features dances and compositions with dance influences by classical and contemporary composers. Her research interests cover historical instruments, history of piano playing in Finland, and Georgi Ligeti's uh, piano music. Please welcome Mrs. Uh, Inviting me back here, it's, it's really lovely to be here for the third time. Um, so I have been here um, last time in 2019, and maybe some of you remember some parts of my uh, my talk that time when I was uh, um, telling about the quarter tone piano project in Finland. Um, so I'm now speaking from pianist's uh, point of view and from my own experience. Um, in, in Finland, we have uh, developed a new kind of quarter tone piano, or quarter tone piano keyboard, if you like. Um, and uh, in, in my previous uh, talks, I have been um, talking about um, also the historical background of the instrument. That was really a surprise to me that that um, this project has opened so many windows also to the past. So, so the, there are these um, instruments uh, that, for instance, Wiesnigradsky and, and Hans Bart were using. Um, today, um, I, will, I will speak about three, three things. And, and first, I will give a sh very short introduction to the, to the piano we have in, in Finland. Uh, this is 
some repetition from, from last time. Um, I will also speak about a uh, website where I'm, I'm collecting material concerning quarter-tone piano music and an online application. You can also uh, play yourself if you like. And I will also tell about my uh, forthcoming CD project and, and uh, about the solo repertoire. Last time I think I had been speaking more about chamber music, uh, ensemble music uh, for quarter term uh, instruments. And, and also maybe I, I explained that uh, uh, I talked about uh, performing uh, quarter term piano concerto by Sampo Harbour. I think by this time I will just concentrate on the solo piano repertoire. Um, this is how the, the keyboard looks like. Um, the design is by me and, and Finnish composer Sampo Haapamäki. And it has been built by Otso Haapamäki. Um, and uh, it's, um, it has optical sensors and, and software um, created by Libero Muredu, music technologist. So behind the um, uh, the, the keys there are optical sensors um, and you can either use a keyboard um, like, like an e-piano so you can use let's say a uh, piano tech um, for the sound but all, you can also um, if you like to have acoustic sound you can connect the piano keyboard to, to acoustic disc clavier pianos that are tuned a quarter turn apart is unfortunately um, almost half half a second a delay, so that that gives some challenges if you play piano oh. music. It, it, it's because of the, the Yamaha uh, software, or maybe or all that that kind of automatic I think pianos have a delay. Um, so compared to the earlier quarter tone pianos from 1920s. There are some advantages that you can now uh, play rapid scales and you can reach um, quarter tone chords with one, one hand. Um, it's also, if, if that's an um, e-piano, it's, it's easy to tune and what was also nice that it's, you can have several tunings if you, if you tune that almost every key you can tune individually, so you can have 24 Edo, but also 22. So this is how the great, great keys are um, placed. So it's, uh, we try to have this kind of pianistic approach that it's uh, very, very much uh, similar to the traditional piano. Um, This is a quarter tone chromatic scale with one hand. like if you connect the, the keyboard to acoustic this card is um, short device uh, 
especially if you have iPad, because I think on a, on a smartphone you can reach the website, but you cannot get any sound from the application. Do you want to try to connect it? Sorry? We have an adapter for the, these devices. Do you want to try to connect it, maybe? Um, it's it's the right. But I, I think this is just very very yeah thanks. But I think um, we, this is just a very short. Uh, <laughs> um, so we can see how if we go to the website you can. Ah, oh, this is strange. Uh, uh, I have the website here, but it has you can see it. Oh, I have different. I think the monitor is mirrored, probably. It's not Mir mirrored. Mirror, uh -huh, um, okay. Never mind. Um, so, this is how it looks like. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and you can uh, play the piano uh, if you... You can uh, change uh, the size of the keyboard if you have <laughs> like to have bigger keys. It's also possible. But um, what I wanted to show you is... Uh, that now here you can also choose 22 Edo mm. and uh, this is how it looks like so uh, um, you can uh, um, <laughs> there are some uh, um, doubled mm. keys here um, but maybe is there anybody who has iPad so you but can? But it works also. On yeah. Okay. On that's Android. good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Can but do you have a sound? Because I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's good. iPhone. Oh, wonderful. My yeah. iPhone is not working. Ah, yeah. oh, it's just iPhone. Okay. Just the uh, octave. You have it high, uh, higher. <laughs> because uh, originally it was set in the uh, braille oct octave, and so sometimes it's not so so loud. Yeah. You can uh, choose the oh. the octave. You can also have. Uh, the, the very high place yeah. at the first option, great, or if you like half. <laughs> have some. Too long. Okay. Nice. And then there's also 30, no. 31 you know, if you need. Nice. And. Um, My phone is not working. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it, at least Chrome um, should work, so. And there is also much more information uh, on the website. You can, if you go to the main page, it's uh, my research website where I've co collected some articles and some uh, videos and so on. Okay, so we can move on. Um, now I, I will tell about my uh, upcoming CD project. It's called Tune In. Um, and uh, I have compositions in 224 Edo, but also 22. Um, and uh, there are um, some compositions that are um, comp composed for the, for the older um, quarter tone pianos and, and also for two pianos, but then there are some some uh, compositions that I have commissioned uh, from Finnish composers uh, like uh, Lauri Mantisari, Hanna Pohjanero and Juhani Nuorvala. Um, I think what, what we can do now is that I will, I will show an example of every, just a short clip um, from um, each, each uh, work. Um, all of them have a, a big different kind of approach the quarter tone music and also they use a little bit different kind of notations, I mean the historical ones. Um, Hanno Bohjanara, um, a Finnish composer and, and the, the work is called uh, Shadows of Light, it has six preludes and uh, this is an example of the third one. <laughs>
Um, this sound is now from from uh, Piano Tech. Okay. This uh, acoustic sound. Oh, sorry. Is that acoustic sound? No, no. This is from uh, Piano Tech. Oh. Um, and then uh, Laura Mantisari has composed uh, three etudes, and they all have a uh, bird. Uh, Names. Um, I will first play a little bit uh, of the Great Migration. You can see the score. This is from the rehearsals. Okay. <laughs> this is how it looks like. But uh, then uh, um, one, one movement is called Woodcock, and I will first play um, the um, uh, piano tech sound, just the beginning. is to, um, because this is um, recorded in MIDI, uh, my purpose is to uh, record it uh, uh, with Yamaha disc clavier pianos and it will be like like in block painting technique so that we first uh, record the kind of normal pitches and then we tune the instrument uh, one quarter turn down and then we, we uh, record again and then we just combine them. So this is how, how it looks like. We are just testing how uh, um, the disc clavier grand piano is reading and how it sounds. So you will just hear, hear uh, uh, half, 50% of the, of the notes now. <laughs> quarter turn pieces um, and I have a, this score that's written for two pianos but if somebody knows if, if, if it exists the, the original score for one player please let me know um. Understood correctly, uh, Charles Ives had um, this kind of piano in mind uh, that was constructed by George Weiss and uh, it was um, owned by Hans or invented by Hans, Hans Bart. Uh, if somebody has any more information about this piano or, or, or any history, historical facts, I would be happy to, to hear. Especially, I'm interested in uh, hearing. Uh, if somebody has core for this uh, shadows of the cathedral. So just a short example. Oh. 
As you see, this scale lends itself to new musical expression. I shall play a few measures from the shadows of a cathedral, my own composition. piano was uh, constructed by Förster piano fabric um, and uh, I had pleasure to, to visit uh, Prague Music Museum where still one of the instruments, one grand piano exists. Um, um, I will, in, in my recording I will play uh, first and third prelude of his, uh, of, of Wiesnigradzki's collection of uh, piano preludes in fifth tone system um, because it has this piano has two manuals it's uh, you can really feel that the, the hands are mostly uh, placed uh, in, in different uh, positions historical composer is Lorraine uh, Twee St. George Tucker, Californian uh, composer. Uh, she has four little uh, pieces for quarter time piano and uh, I understood that, that she had uh, two pianos placed in this like 90 degree angle. Uh, her notation is quite specific. She has these kind of arrows uh, that mean that those notes are uh, quarter turn lower. Um, maybe this, these compositions are somehow approaching just intonation because it's a, the C is very, very uh, central pitch and, and it has kind of uh, uh, shadows from the, the overtone. Uh, to 22, you know, um, I commissioned a, a piece, a work, uh, from uh, Johanny Nuorvala, um, and we had discussion of this notation, and uh, like we just just uh, saw uh, the, the, how, how 22 Edo is notated with those arrows. Um, um, Johanny kindly uh, notated this, uh, uh, his, his music um, like with a Dorico program so that he colored all those, those notes, pitches that are on, on the, the gray keys. So uh, for me it's much easier to, to read. And uh, those ones that are uh, orange or yellow, color you see, um, those are those ones that are, are in harmonic like B's and, and E's. Um, this uh, work has uh, six movements and now I will play uh, the end of the first movement uh, from Pleuré and uh, the, the beginning of the second mo movement in black and white and grey. Thank you. 
like it was in, in first time, time 100 years ago, uh, please let me know. And if you have any uh, tips, uh, what I, I just uh, asked during my presentation, if you know uh, anything about a class I score for solo pianist or Hans Bach uh, music, that the score for Shadows of the Cathedral or any other, other um, interesting quarter tone piano compositions, let me know. Thank you so much. Okay, great. I think I'm a little bit late for your example, <laughs> but uh, at least we have this as well. So I guess we go for the questions, Elisa. Okay. Um, uh, Hans, maybe? Yeah, thank you for this beautiful presentation. And, uh, and part was really the continuation of my speech, and uh, and of course this uh, this uh, motif uh, or this material of trumpet array, it's very very I know it already because uh, Johanny uh, made for us an ex ex uh, exercise that was named Gradus in machine six scale, but it's a scale that uh, is like a stretched uh, uh, here in this mode is a stretched. Uh, uh, Lydian scale, so the machine uh, mode is, has six notes, but uh, it's like a uh, diatonic, but stretched out that the seventh note is, uh, is stretched to an octave. It's a very interesting scale, and this thing, I don't know if he made the, if, he, if it's exactly the same scale uh, or this, uh, but the melodic material okay, uh, he used in this machine six uh, singing exercise. Uh, yeah. So, so that uh, Everything is connected and oh, yes. floating. Um, so, uh, Eleni, maybe? Uh, 
Thank you. Very, very interesting project and presentation. I just wanted to ask something just in case to uh, be sure, because I, I experienced a concert in Basel like some years ago with a Wiesnagrad hit three manual piano. Okay. And I was wondering if you had this photo because it seemed like very familiar. Yeah, there are four pianos that, yeah. the, that were built, and I think one is in, in Basel. Yeah, uh, in Studio 22 or something. Uh, the one. Uh, it, was, it was bought by Paul Zeiger Stiftung. Yes. I think now it's not good. Uh, do you know where it exists now, nowadays? Is it I have no idea what Paul Zacher is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, the 31 mm -hmm. studio that is, I don't think that they have like um, historical instruments that they reconstruct, but they don't have an original instrument. So I don't know where they have it. And I know mm -hmm. that it was like the last time when they purchased that it was supposed to be used for performance. <coughs> and it was very practical, the idea that they didn't think that the first and the third are actually tuned the same. Yes. But it helps like with the, the hand position. It helps so, a little bit, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I mean, from this point, because you have many uh, great experience, but I think that um, your idea is going like this direction because you have also three different levels. So. Yes, yeah. But um, I think... Uh, for contemporary music, uh, it's it's impossible to have just like three manuals. You have to have this kind of uh, keyboard where they are even closer that you can reach by by one hand. But definitely for Wiesengrotsky's music, that's still uh, playable if you have like two or well, three manuals. I was uh, yeah, it was a nice experience to visit this Prague Music Museum, and I, they let me a little bit try to use a piano prelude, but it, it, it yeah, it's kind of brain gymnastics to, to think how to finger the music. Did we find anybody? Has and, uh, there's one more question in the back. Yeah, uh, thank you for your presentation. I was wondering if you ran into any difficulties when you were mapping repertoire that was written for like two manuals, for example, onto your design. If there were any issues at all that uh, you had to find some work around or some things were not performable. Actually, I was happily surprised that it was possible to play, and uh, so far, at least those compositions I have been playing, I have had no difficulty in that. But uh, maybe I don't know. But maybe it's to this direction. It's either it's 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 possible to to play a uh, historical repertoire on this this keyboard, but not not vice versa. But yeah, <laughs> so far not. And Richard, please. And just as a follow-up to his question, mm -hmm. uh, not exactly two manuals, but John Eaton's quarter tone piece with the two piano keyboards at right angles to one another. Mm -hmm. The choreography that he employs in performing in this, in this almost in a pyramid, you might say, yeah. uh, would there be uh, challenges in transcribing, if we can call it transcribing. Yeah, um, I think it's, it's maybe the same thing with uh, the uh, St. George Tucker's music, because it was also for, uh, for this kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> um, thing but, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, on the other hand, you can also, when you have this uh, gray keys and the black and white keys, you can also think that the, the gray keys are like one manual. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So, and then you just have to think, okay, which, which way, if it's the right hand above or, or, or the other way. Mm -hmm. So, if, with, um, I think it was when I was playing Ives music, which is also for, the score was for two pianists and the same idea that they are, like separate. Yes. So I was trying the both ways and then, okay, it has to be like this way. So then it, it works, but not, not this way. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. As a pianist, how much of time do you think uh, for a regular pianist need to be uh, like a familiar with this keyboard to have a concert with a repertoire or something? Um, it's a good question. I think um, First time when I played the piano publicly was 2015, and it was just like a couple of months uh, after I got the instrument, so it, it was possible. But um, because if you, yeah, somehow because there is this kind of the, the layout 
is reflecting the pianistic tradition. So I think, but but of course now, um, yeah, that it's, it was seven years ago. So I, of course I am now much more comfortable with it. But uh, yeah, depends on the music. Are, are there any uh, difficulties, for example, to perform like octave octave runs, uh, like scales? Mm -hmm. On the in the in the middle uh, middle. I mean, yeah, in the middle. Or, the middle yeah. yeah, yeah, like Basically. like to do some scale. Yes. Uh, it's yeah. because the keys are quite quite are quite short. And, yeah. You're right. Yes. Well, octaves. That, that's if you can play them on the piano. It's it's almost the same <coughs> feeling. But there are some limitations. If you have chords, uh -huh. and then. Uh, there's a difference, let's say, playing a chord uh, where you using a thumb and uh, like from here or there, for instance, uh -huh. it's much easier there, but if you have to cross the hands and so uh -huh. on, then it's more, somehow, <laughs> you know, I've learned many new things, how, <laughs> how, how the, the length of the fingers, let's say, it's, uh, it matters. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, just a, a yes. comment. Uh, in the diary of uh, Ivan Vishnevatsky, mm -hmm. uh, he said that in 1936 mm -hmm. he was not satisfied by the, by the piano okay. and uh, he writes all his partition with two piano uh, tune a uh, quarter tone apart. Yes. So. Yes, I have seen that um, in uh, the book I saw that, that uh, edition that it was for two pianists. But uh, so it, was it so that first he composed the, the version for one pianist, but why wasn't he satisfied? Why? Because um, uh, the, um, it was in fact uh, two piano, two two piano in one. Yes. And the quality was not so good because there are also some resonance uh, uh, between the strings. Yes. So. Uh, if you have two quarter, two piano parts, yeah. uh, they they interfere, but just at the quarter tone. Uh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. interesting so, to hear because that's yeah. something I was I was thinking that of course if you have like two acoustic pianos that they are placed let's say one meter uh, yeah. distance, they are they are resonating less than oh yeah, this, yeah. yeah. that's interesting. Oh, well, yeah. So, and he also, uh, Martin Smolka, find in the Alois Saba archive mm -hmm. uh, three scores of uh, Vishnevatsky mm -hmm. where he used uh, colored uh, notation. Mm -hmm. Aha, uh, where, where is this archive? Um, this archive, I, I don't know where, where they are, mm -hmm. in, in Bro or in Prague. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know exactly. Okay. Yeah, okay. but uh, I have a copy of uh, this mm -hmm. uh, this score. Oh, yeah. wonderful! Maybe. Yeah. Yes, uh, he had also this. Uh, this is uh, I found these yeah. sketches in the archives yeah. in Palzahevich, and so that's how he colored the the. But maybe uh, this was before the the first the piano was. Yeah. And actually, also the layout of Haba's. Uh, uh, system harmonium is quite similar to your your layout because mm -hmm. he also has the upper manual which is the same as the first manual and uh, he, he, yeah yeah it has three manuals and and the third one is just a copy of the first one to help the uh, the performer and there is a young Czech uh, pianist who is right now pioneering the performance of, on that uh, instrument. Uh, mm. the, uh, again, I, I can contact, I like, can um, connect you with him. Well, if interested. Yes, interesting. Yeah, but, but actually coming back to this idea of uh, doing it for two pianos, so the resonances, they sound more like two traditional pianos. So yeah. if you have everything in one, the resonance is more specific to this to to this system so Actually, I, I mean as a composer I think I would uh, choose uh, in one for this uh, yeah. mm -hmm. special resonance if actually you like to see, there's a very short clip when I was trying it 
Ah, sorry. What is it? Ah, uh, is it? Does it play this one? Ah, oh, you can tell. Yeah, you, yeah, because you have specific limitations of your fingers. Yes, yes, you have four in Nachteile. Yes, yes, of course, yeah. And also but, uh, uh, in the spirit, uh, using more than two or three or four, or you can do uh, a third of tone and a third of tone yes. with piano apart, and uh, there is no... Uh, specific technique for the player. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it's either if you get if you obtain something new, you lose. It's always you lose yeah. and you gain. Yeah. Yeah. So having having two piano apart, it's sometimes difficult if you have a, a tree. Yeah. So the, <laughs> yes. You have yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah, probably depends on how you will write the composition. So yeah. you might need this, or you might need the other. Yes. Well, it's a. You know, I mean, there is a separate phenomenon called the duo pianists, and and a, a repertoire for two pianists. And I think it it would you know it would be quite different from trying to consolidate uh, for a single pianist. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be interesting. To have two of your pianos with two musicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I have a couple of questions for from a little bit different, different uh, aspect. So, for example, if you play like Gerard Grise's piece, only like four pitches or so are due to the horror from lower or so. Mm -hmm. So, how can it be, uh, I mean, for a pianist to play uh, equal tempered music? Is it easy for uh, them to play on this keyboard? I mean, because for a composer, they can just employ a small amount of the microtones, but can have a huge effect for the final result. So but the major of the pitches could be just equal tempo on the piano, and they can employ just a small amount of microtones that can be played in the quarter keyboard of the keyboard. And how much of the agility do you have to play like a regular Chopin attitude in the microtone of the piano? Mm. Oh, sorry, uh, the, the question is. So, if you want to play Chopin at you, yes. say, yeah. on that microphone piano, yeah. can it be possible? What is it easy? Or is it totally different? Uh, That's a good question. I've never, <laughs> I've never tried that. Yeah. Uh, somehow, maybe because the, the, the red keys are the pretty sure, page. maybe you can just reach. Where can I make about, a Yeah, at least I've, I've been playing some Chopin Nocturne, but I've never tried any too. I don't know, maybe. Professor Kotsky. Yes, yes, definitely. But uh, yeah. yeah, you can at least uh, play between the, you know, yes. here yes. on this. Uh, but if you if you like to reach also these uh, front white keys, you have to stretch a little. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, um,